Welcome back, my friends. Today, I just want to take a little time to talk about what I consider to be one of the most useful and essential tools that every homeowner or renter or anyone attempting to do a little work uh, in their home on their own needs, a multimeter. Now there's a hundred variations of these things. There are expensive ones, there are cheap ones. It doesn't really matter. They all function essentially the same for the, the, the common tasks that we're gonna use them for. So today, I just wanna go over a few of the basic functions to make sure you understand how to use it properly, correctly, and safely. So let's get started. Hi, and welcome to Dad Fixed It. My name is Eric, and this is my family. We're a family of six living in the Northeast. As you can imagine, life is pretty expensive. To help us out, I try to fix everything I can around our house to help save money. I'm not a plumber, a carpenter, a mason, or an electrician, but I try my best with what I have. Hopefully I can help you fix something and save you a lot of money. Come along on this journey and let's learn together. Let's fix it. So there are a number of different ways that you can test um, voltage in your house. You can test your outlets. I mean, you gotta test your car battery. You're gonna to wanna to test a lot of different things. Uh, and there's a bunch of different tools and, and means to do that. Um, so for instance, if you want to test outlets in your house, you can get one of these things. This is a, this is a non-contact voltage tester. Uh, this one in particular is from Harbor Freight and I find it to be a piece of garbage. Um, there's a few better ones out there, even at Home Depot, you can get the Klein one that's a lot better. But since this is relying on induction and not contact uh, to ensure that your source is off or on, I don't really like it. In a pinch, it works out, but let me show you why. So here we have an outlet. What you're supposed to do is push the button and it will tell you when you get close that your power is on. Okay, that's great. Now, if I should touch something that doesn't have power, let's just say my flashlight here, it doesn't work. All right, no, no lights, no sound, that's great. But here we have my Harbor Freight <laughs> light, and here's the pull chain for it. And check this out. Hmm, that's definitely not alive, but it's telling me that it is. So you can see what I mean that it's not exactly 100% reliable. A multimeter solves a lot of these issues. Now, usually when it comes, it'll come with a set of two leads. The meter, sometimes you have to put batteries in them, sometimes you don't. This is a very expensive multimeter. I would not recommend that you go out and buy something like this, but this is just the one I happen to have. Um, and they're very easy to use. So a few basic functions. Obviously here, it's off. Here, with this little squiggly in the V, so that's showing you that it's looking for AC voltage. Now, if you're testing a battery in your car or uh, a battery, you know, like a AA or AAA or CR132, that's not gonna work, that function, because it's looking for an alternating wave on AC voltage. Here, the V with the straight line and the dotted line, is DC voltage. So that is what you're gonna test a car battery with or another battery, something that's a straight source. If you want a much more accurate DC, uh, if you're looking for like a much lower voltage range, this will measure in millivolts. The ohm symbol here is the resistance setting. This setting right here is a diode setting, which we're not gonna get into today, but also a tone setting so that when there's continuity, the meter will beep, and when there's not, it won't. And the rest of it, we're not gonna get into. So very simply, we're gonna, the, the leads are usually color coded. You can see right here, this guy's red, so you're gonna put the red lead in. And most of the time, this one has uh, some extra functions that we're not gonna get into, but you put the red in the red one and the black in the black one. And then just, let's turn your meter on. Now something that's very important to look for is the correct measurement. So you can see right here, it looks like, oh man, these, these leads just up in the air. We have 30 volts, we have 37 volts. If I touch myself, go across my fingers, oh my goodness, we have 375 volts. No, it's millivolts. So it's measuring some just, a lot of times I'll call it ghost voltage or ambient. 
uh, stuff that's in the air. It's not real voltage because if you touch the two leads together, it pretty much goes away. You got to look. There's that little M, millivolts. So that's thousandths of a volt. The next one would be DC. You can see generally that will not pick up any uh, ambient voltage. And if we want to test a battery, we can come right over here. And typically the red will test the positive side, the black the negative side. Look, 1.6 volts. It's a good way. It's much better and more accurate than your typical battery tester with a little meter on it uh, that shows you a battery's good or it's not good. You can see right here that at 1.6 volts, that's about as good of a charge as you'll ever get on a double A. When they start to go bad, they get down to about 1.3 volts. And that's when they won't function. So it's super easy to use. Millivolts we're not going to use because we're up over uh, one volt. If you're trying to measure something under a volt, that's the setting you would use. This next setting right here, you can see the ohm symbol, is for resistance. Now if you touch the two leads together, you can see that it's telling you it's 0 0.4, 0 0.3 ohms, which basically means a short circuit. You could measure a resistor, you could measure a piece of wire you might sus uh, suspect is broken, something like that. However, if you're ever going to use the resistance measurement, you have to make sure your circuit is off. Whether it's AC or DC, it needs to be off. You cannot measure resistance with a circuit alive. It will cause problems. Uh, there, this thing is internally fused, but if you put this on resistance and you go ahead and put it right in a 120-volt uh, house socket, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to uh, pop the fuse inside. And then these are really odd fuses that are kind of hard to get and expensive. So I wouldn't recommend doing that. That's not something you want to do. Now, tone is if you're trying to ring out wires or see if something's actually connected without looking at an ohmic value. You can just, you see, touch together and it beeps. No continuity, it's off. Continuity, it's on. But more, than, more often than not, what you're going to be using at home is the AC voltage. So that's alternating current voltage measurement. So let's take a look at what this would do. Right here, I have my outlet. And in your outlets at home, this guy is always going to be ground. The small eye, if you look at it like a face, there's like a winking eye and an open eye, and then the mouth. That's how I always look at it. The small eye is always going to be the hot leg, the leg that has 120 volts on it. And this one is going to be your neutral. Now, without getting into too many details, the neutral and the ground are usually at the same potential because they go back to the same bus bar in your panel. So you can take measurements from both of them. If you suspect you have a bad ground or a bad neutral, this is a good way to test. So what you'll typically do is put the black lead in the big eye, the red lead in the small eye on voltage AC, and you'll see I have 119.3 volts AC. Now I can also put this in the ground and I get roughly the same measurement. If you see a big variation in your measurement, that means you could either have a neutral issue or a ground issue. And this is another good tool to have. Uh, these aren't very expensive. And this is something, honestly, I think is worth the money. It's the ideal 61-035, and this will just plug into an outlet, and depending on how the LEDs light up, it'll tell you whether your outlet's wired properly or not. So here we can see, we put it in here, boom, we have an outside and outside light lit. If we look closely at that, and it's telling you that the left light is lit and the right light is lit, it's correct wiring. See, the left light is lit, right light is lit, correct wiring. And it'll give you all these other, depending on which lights light up, you could have an open ground, reverse polarity, an open hot, open neutral. There's a lot of different things that this can show you. And especially if you're going to buy a house or you're planning on doing some electrical work, this is good to go around and test every single outlet in your house. Because if this one is hot and this one is neutral, that is an exceedingly dangerous situation something you're going to want to call an electrician for and get remedied, especially if you have a number of outlets. That means something, someone did something wrong along the lines you're going to want to get fixed. It's a hazard to you. It's a hazard to your appliances. 
Uh, it's a fire hazard. It's, it's really dangerous. So again, if you're going to use your meter, you can go neutral to hot. You can go ground to hot. And those will give you some measurements. And this is a good way to figure out, okay, my outlet's still alive before I work on it, or it's got the right voltage. Now you go turn your breaker off, you come back, you put it in, oh, now you can see for sure it's dead. You always wanna go back and test to make sure that it's working. One easy way to also make sure that it's working is by putting it on the ohm setting, touching the leads together, and you can see that you still have continuity across these two points. Now, if you had put this on ohms, stuck it in the outlet, and something you didn't really see anything happen, but then you want to rely on this for your safety to test, you could reasonably go back and test an outlet and it show nothing. But that's because the fuse inside is popped because you left it on the wrong setting when you put it in the outlet. And then when you put these together, instead of showing 0.6 ohms, it'll show open or over the limit. See, that's another just self-check. Every time you test, you should always self-check. Check your live source, put it in the outlet, see that you got 116 volts, 120 volts. Turn the breaker off, put it back in the outlet. Make sure that the outlet shows off. And to make sure your meter still works, you could go to another outlet and check that, that it shows voltage, or you could come over here and put it on continuity or on the ohms. Uh, measurement and see that your leads are indeed good because these do break and they do fail. So overall, that was just a brief overview of how to use a multimeter. So you can find these on Amazon. You can find them at Harbor Freight. You can find them at Lowe's and Home Depot. It does not have to be an expensive multimeter. Uh, an inexpensive multimeter is a thousand times better than one of these, even a good one of these. Make the investment. It's something you should have. It'll ensure your safety. Always do your self-tests, check, recheck, and then check again. And this will keep you safer than any other electrical measurement instrument if you're going to be doing some work. And again, you can use it to check all kinds of things. Like if you suspect that your battery may be going bad in your car, it's great to have. This isn't going to do a thing for you. Um, you can check if your kids have ride-on toys and you wonder how the charge is doing on those batteries. It'll work great for that. You can check, like I was showing you before, double A's, triple A's, other batteries, even your rechargeable GoPro batteries. You can see the voltage state with those. You get very precise, very accurate measurements with these. And again, maybe I'll put some links down below in the description of some, some meters I'd recommend that won't break the bank. And that would be a seriously, seriously good investment. So I hope you learned something today. I hope this was helpful. Hope I was able to maybe save you a couple bucks. We'll see you next time.